right, so the limit, and again, I didn't really talk about this in the last video, but that limit of the infinite sum, which is the area of the curve between A to B, is actually solved, when we get to the fundamental theorem of calculus, by a definite integral. All right, the integral is represented by integration from A to B of my function. And again, that notation means I'm taking the function f of x, and I'm finding the accumulation of it, the sum of it, from A to B. That's what this means. It's the sum of the function values between A and B. And what that translates into graphically is, well, I'm finding the area under the curve. And so what we're going to do is well, we're going to look at applications of that. I want to solve this definite integral, which is, again, this special limit where I'm adding up all of the function values the area under the curve represents. All right, so between my A to my B. And we're going to do that two ways. We're going to do that if we have a picture that's nice and easy that I can solve with geometry. And then I'm going to do an example where we'll have to set up the rectangles and solve them with adding up my rectangles, all right, like we did in the previous video. All right, so this is the definite integral which is solved using this limit. What it is, it's the sum of all the function values from point A to point B, and it finds the area under the curve from point A to point B if my function is positive. All right, function is above the, again, f of x is positive above the x-axis from point A to point B. All right, so again, make sure you do watch the MyLab videos. They explain this in a little more detail. I'm going to do the examples to give you just a few more examples to work over. All right, so first, if I can use geometry, I like to because I can get more accurate answers that way. All right, so if I can find area using some of my geometric equations. This way, in this case, it is very helpful to graph the functions. You graph them either on your graphing calculator or graph them by hand. Most of the functions will be very simple functions. They'll either be nice linear equations or half of a circle, right, which is the example they do in my lab. All right, so in this case, I'm going to do a nice line case. So I want to find the accumulated sum of my function 1 fourth x, right, the area under my curve 1 fourth x from 2 to 7. So first, in order to do that, I'm going to draw the picture. All right, so this is a line. Right, because it's if we draw this, it's the line y equals one fourth x. I'm going to draw the two points where I'm starting and stopping. I'm going to start at x equals two and stop at x equals seven. Well, I find my y values that go with that. Right, so when I plug two into this formula, I'm going to get two times one fourth. Well, that comes out one half. And when I plug seven in, that's, that comes out seven fourths. Right, seven times one fourth is seven fourths. And so I'm just going to draw the dots, 2, 7. So 2 is here at the point 2, 1 half. 7 is at 7, 7 fourths. All right, which again, if you want to know, 7 fourths is 1.75. Sometimes it's easier to work with decimals. All right, I'm going to connect the dots because it's a line. It's straight. Now, technically, the line goes on for forever, but I don't want the for forever part. I'm only interested in between 2 and 7. And so this is the area I want to find. I want to find the area under this curve between 2 and 7. So this area here is what I'm looking for, right? Because this is the 1 half x, not 1 half, 1 fourth x. All right, that's this edge. I stop at 7, start at 2, and then this is the base. And so you'll notice this is a trapezoid. All right? Or, um, and I'll do an example of a trapezoid later, sometimes we don't remember our trapezoid equation, so you can break this up into a rectangle and a right triangle. Right? This would be a right triangle up here. This would be my rectangle down here. And that's actually how I'm going to do it. I'm going to break it up into, I've got a rectangle area, base times height, plus a right triangle area base times height, which remember base times height is the area of a rectangle, and triangle is one half base times height of the triangle. All right, so that's how I'm going to do it. Now, you can use the trapezoid formula, and I am going to do area of a trapezoid later when I do an application, so I'll do that as well there too. All right, but that's how, again, sometimes it's easier to, if you don't remember the area of a trapezoid, I can break this up into stuff that I might be able to remember better, like I said, a rectangle and a triangle. All right, so area would be my rectangles base times height 
plus my right triangle, which is one half its base times height. All right, so first the base and the height of my rectangle, and then the base, let's not call it height one, height two. They're different, right? The height of my rectangle and the height of my triangle are different. The bases are the same, though. The base would be this distance here, all right, which would be 7 minus 2, which comes out 5. So my base is a distance of 5. The height of my rectangle comes from this y value, right? And so in this case, the height is 1 half. It goes up to 1 half here. Now, the height of my triangle is a little harder because it starts at 1 half and it stops at 1.75. And so to find that out, I have to take my 1.75 minus my 1 half, right? Because it's this distance here. And so that comes out 1.25. And so that's the height of my triangle. All right, so the area of my rectangle is 5 times 1 half. The area of my triangle is 1 half, 5 times 1.25, right? The 5 is the base of both. The height of my rectangle is 1 half. And then remember, the area of a triangle is the 1 half comes from the, the area formula. 5 times uh, 1.25. All right, give me a second while I find my calculator to type that out. So 5 times 0.5 plus 0.5 times 5 times 1.25. So this comes out to be 5.625 is my area. And this is the case because I could find it exactly. That's exactly what that area is. All right, so the first geometric example. And so I'm going to stop there and I'll do the second geometric example in my next video.